Okay, wonderful. So welcome uh, to Billy Coaching Live. Uh, will be a pleasure uh, this weekly uh, connection with you on YouTube, on Twitter, on LinkedIn. Welcome. Uh, so I will briefly introduce myself and introduce the wonderful uh, guest today before we start the discussion. And I want to ask you, please share your comments, your questions. I will integrate those as part of this discussion. Okay, so yeah, so that will be useful for us. And please comment and, and share what comes to your mind. Okay, so that said, um, I'm uh, Christine Billy, professional coach um, specializing in influencing, in leadership. And I have the pleasure today to uh, welcome uh, Edgar Papke, okay, uh, to talk about this uh, very interesting question, how to align for innovation. So that sounds like a, a short to the point question. And, you know, it's, it feels to me already like opening a big box <laughs> of, of <laughs> surprise and insight. So I'm so excited, yeah. So before we, we, we jump into the discussion and we open this box, I would like to introduce Edgar. So I uh, actually met Edgar as part of ACEC. For those who don't know what is ACEC, is the Association of uh, Corporate Executive Coaches. I have the pleasure to be the ambassador for Europe and Asia. And, you know, I, I met, you know, wonderful uh, leaders, wonderful coaches there. So that's why, you know, we are here today with Edgar. Yeah. Oh, and, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want to say hello to CB, the, the, the you know, the leader of, uh, you know, the founder and the leader of uh, ACEC. So Edgar uh, is yeah. a business. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. I was just saying, yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> So Edgar is a business psychologist and writer, founder of True Alignment and executive in residence at the Innovation Center, Regis University. Um, what I find really interesting about Edgar is that he dedicates his work to the art of alignment and very impressive uh, results. Uh, so you, you will share about your expertise and stories uh, you've done 3,000 keynote speech speeches. Uh, you interacted with at least uh, 40,000 executives who attended your workshops. You are a best-selling author. So to name a few of, of your books, uh, True Alignment, The Elephant in the Boardroom, <laughs> Innovation by Design. Yes, we like that. Yeah, Innovation by Design. And also what I discovered, I didn't know Edgar, I didn't know yet that you are a chef, a famous chef, and singer and soccer coach. So very nice. Yeah. Welcome. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Mm. Okay. So I have a first question for you. So yeah. what brought you to do what you are doing today? Yeah. Well, I have a background. Uh, my my professional background um, is um, that I spent time as a high risk insurance underwriter, of all things, uh, in global markets. And then I went to culinary school and was a chef and restaurateur, and did that for ten years. And then uh, went back to uh, went back to university to to school to uh, do my graduate work in leadership psychology. And how I got to that was um, my brother, who's an organizational psychologist in Germany. Uh, he encouraged me to, to uh, become a psychologist. That's based on some assessments that I did, personality assessments. Mm -hmm. And so uh, and uh, I, I couldn't quite see myself being a therapist, though a lot of my clients call me their executive therapist now. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I couldn't quite see that. So any idea? And I just... I love business as a whole. I look at business as being the most advanced art form that we participate in as human beings. And art is the uh, uh, creative expression of human emotion. Mm. And uh, what we do in business, and we've been doing it for thousands of years, is we create products and services in business to to fulfill human need and desire. So um, it, it's very, it, it's all about innovation. It's all about creativity. 
and um, and we're so good at it. I look at the world through the lens of that we all participate in a in a global business society, uh, a business society. Because if you step back, and I think it's really breathtaking that you step back for a moment and you realize that every human being on the planet Earth, on an entire planet, every human being in one shape, form, or another is a, uh, a consumer, a user of a product or service. And um, so I have a, a high creative side. And so looking at the world through that lens, um, that's my interest in innovation and business. And um, and w w from from the standpoint of my my work with with organizations and government and 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 executives, it's really about the, their alignment to their who they really are and how they bring that alignment into the world to innovate and create uh, what I would suggest to use good. Because I think at the end of the day, the purpose of of business, the purpose of our existence. In, in just in most things that we do is to bring some something good to the world mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. and that's what brings me to the work and and I've been doing this now as a uh, coach and leadership psychologist and business psychologist now for uh, for over 30 years and just absolutely mm -hmm. love it and find great alignment in myself to it oh wow this is beautiful um, why you were describing the link you make uh, between business, heart, and emotion, uh, an image came to my mind. I, I used to work in a pretty well-known uh, organization in pharma where the CEO was really uh, uh, also focusing on heart. So in, on the campus, we were surrounded, we were sci doing science and we were surrounded by paintings or sculpture from different countries. And I was always very inspired by that. So really this link between the, the heart and the business, you know, when, when you were sharing that, immediately this image came to me. Yeah, it's so, so clear. Um, thank you for sharing that. And also the link you make between business and emotion. Yeah, this desire you, you share. Yeah, maybe can you elaborate a little bit uh, more on the the link you make uh, between uh, innovation and emotion? Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, one of the things that we know on a very both scientific and very practical level is the role that emotion plays uh, in, in I mean, even science, really, when you, when you look at science, if you were to think about it, wanting to create uh, a non-emotional approach to decision-making or understanding, mm -hmm. Uh, the, the whole idea of science is about the need for, you know, to satisfy our curiosity, our mm -hmm. need, need, desire and wanting to, to have knowledge as well as predictability uh, mm -hmm. and, 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 how we, and how we do things and the outcomes that we get. That's mm -hmm. human nature. So, again, everything that we do comes back to this idea of human nature and emotion. So it, 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 and so when we think about... Uh, deep-seated needs and desires that we ha all have as human beings, or need and desire for community, uh, for knowledge, for uh, for uh, you know te technology to make our lives better and and uh, and and uh, to get more done, and and also then to speak to the idea of acceptance and how we accept one another as human beings, and you can see the role that even social media can play in that. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we see over and over the, that what we really do is we, th through, through innovation, what we're doing is increasingly, ever increasingly, expand how we bring our human desires and needs, our emotional beings, to the world. Mm. And, um, and hence, the, my comment before that all products and services that we create in business are in response to those needs and desires that we have. And, and to me, innovation is it can simply be seen through the lens of solving a problem, uh, and um, and in solving that that problem, what we're doing is we're we're satisfying whatever that need is. So innovation is the building of one idea upon another in an effort to solve a problem that is it really is the gap between what we have and what we want, that human conflict and tension that we always live in. If you think about it through the um, through just simple human design and human-centered approaches to solving problems, that's where we're going to wind up eventually. 
I mean, we always wind up there. So mm -hmm. really what we're doing when you think about innovation is we're closing the gap between our current state and a desired future state, which is also the defini definition I use to, to talk about conflict. Conflict mm -hmm. is the natural tension between what we have and what we want. Mm -hmm. And that drives all innovation. Uh, it's just quite remarkable to see through that lens. And all of our work with in the context of you know, coaching and organizations is to to get at that and understand what that what that gap is about. Because once you have that, I think you know if you were to think about it being magical, I mean that's where the magic is. And that's why also the deep interpretation of the heart. You know, the hands are how we come together. The mind is the knowledge and. And, and the intellectual pursuit in innovation. And at the end of the day, it's about the emotion, it's about the heart and how that comes to play. Mm, so nice. Um, the, the, you know, how you, you present um, uh, the, this link between accepting emotions and, you know, connecting, right? Um, It reminds me about when I was doing experiments in the lab and, you know, um, I was doing my PhD and then, you know, you try, you fail, you know, you expect something and you see a different yes. result. So uh -huh. you approach it in a slightly different way. And this, um, you know, develop your resilience, right? You say, okay, so at some point I'm going to succeed, okay? But it can be very frustrated for a while, okay? And so it's all how you manage your emotion, right? So I could really see, you know, during that time, I can really see the, the link between, you know, I was able to succeed and find a way when I was ready to accept. Okay. Yeah. That's, yes. Yeah. And that's key. And yeah. what you just, what you just, um, what you just, what you just bring to light and what you, uh, is that um, it's, it's through that emotion. Uh, so often, much like with conflict, we want to go around it. Mm -hmm. And when you, even if you're in a laboratory in, in a scientific setting, conducting an experiment, mm -hmm. your deep desire and need to, to accomplish, to, to create, to find success mm -hmm. is actually th that path. And yeah, there's that emotional piece of anticipation of hope. There's also, of course, the fear of being unsuccessful, yeah. the fear of failure that comes with that. Yeah. And the realization is that we can't go around that, that the, the, the direct path to the yeah. highest forms of discovery, you know, innovation, and creativity. Yeah. And, and we come to learn this through life is to not try and go around the fear. It's not about going around the emotion or the conflict that we have. It's really about moving through it. And yeah. what, I think once we accept that, then we can have a deeper understanding of what that emotion is yeah. and be able to then apply it and how we innovate and how we solve a problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. Right on the mark there. Yeah. You see, uh, all the memories comes to my mind. And, uh, you know, I, I had a, my PhD supervisor. She said, you know, when I finished the PhD, she said, yeah, you learn resilience. That's it. Yeah. Nothing else, nothing else right? So. <laughs> and, and when you think about what resilience is, mm -hmm. I, I think if you peel everything away, resilience is our ability to embrace and manage our own fear you know, yeah that's what resilience is about is that we keep moving yeah. forward despite yeah. what new new uh barriers or challenges or fears that we that we encounter yeah that's really really I, i am i have to say amazed how we went to how it feels to me to the point around the fear here in this discussion right um because when i move towards coaching Uh, over life uh, during my experience. So I was approaching, you know, uh, innovation and connecting in different ways, not anymore with, you know, ingredients in the lab, but with people. So it's still experiment, you know, what makes uh, a team work, what makes it struggling, you know? And, um, and so we had a lot of discussion around fear because, um, And a lot of research has been done for those who are listening. Please don't hesitate to join us in the discussion. A lot of research has been done about what we name psychological safety, right? So, and the, the impact it has on teamwork and innovation. So, um, when you are talking about alignment, I am curious at the moment, um, uh, what is the link uh, from your perspective with, be, between this ability to align and the fear yeah wow that's very good that's an excellent question yeah 
um, because I can think of a couple of, there's, um, I think I begin with the simple simplicity of how I see life, which is that the greatest predictor of success is alignment. Mm. So uh, at a personal level, alignment to who we are at the core, mm. our values, our beliefs, perhaps as a leader, the legacy that I'd like to create. Mm. And how do I align myself to that and come to that every, each and every day in my behavior, the things mm. I do and say, mm. and my relationships. Mm. So then there's alignment in relationships. And uh, the relationships are good when, we, when we're mutually benefiting uh, one another and our expectations for one another are being met. So then alignment is about you understanding my expectations of you and I, and I be, being able to, to, to speak to those and you being able to speak to the expectations you have for me. I like to say that unspoken expectations mm -hmm. are the slippery slope to resentment, anger, distrust, and disappointment. So, mm -hmm. uh, so the more we can bring expectations into the spoken realm. So even there, you can start at, at, the, at the self and at the relationship mm -hmm. level. You can begin to understand the power of fear. Because can I, can I openly and honestly speak to you about what my expectations on our relationship are? And I mm. can, can I openly, without fear, fearlessly explore fearless exploration? Mm -hmm explore your expectations you have of me mm. and innovation even in a relationship is understanding those because that's where the forms of misalignment occur is if we're not able to speak to our expectations of one another and so the fear can get in the way and yet understanding that fear is how we solve the problems mm. even in a relationship which applies to partnerships couples marriages and family mm. relationships you can mm. see the power of that and there's also a side note that comes to mind in this that I think is very important. And that is we, we speak a lot about being able to be vulnerable about our fears, about our expectations, and to speak those. Mm -hmm. I find, and in coaching, what I find more difficult and more challenging is to listen fearlessly, to be able to listen with vulnerability, mm -hmm. what we may hear from the other person. And, and so now I take that same idea and you extend it into, um, into teams, into groups, into communities. And the kind of conversations that we really need to be able to have, uh, even at the global social level, I find it's very interesting. As I was reading in the New York Times an article this morning about uh, climate change caused migration. So how are people migrating from areas and, and places in the world that are accelerating in temperature change. And of course, what it's doing to their crops, to their water supplies, and how they're beginning to migrate. And the, the push against here in the United States, you can see the push against the, the border between Mexico and the United States. And if you look at it through a systems thinking lens, you see that that's a lot of that is being caused by people beginning to migrate because of climate change. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to see an acceleration of this. Mm -hmm. So how do we innovate and how would we solve those problems? Um, the idea of, you know, can we live in a borderless society is so difficult for us to want to comprehend. And unless we begin to speak to the fears that are associated with that, we're not going to be able to innovate the real solutions. And yeah. so we can live in, 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 the, in the dismay of the denial and, and the drudgery of denial for quite a while, which is also fear-based. But I see that happening. In the context of business, we see this day in and day out, how, uh, how fear will get in the way of innovation, yet it's the disclosure of that fear that yeah. allows us to identify the problem, to move yeah. forward. And I'm, I'm sure you probably see that the same in, in your coaching work. Yeah. And, uh, and I have to say that this disclosure that you are talking about uh, really resonates with me because uh, as part of my uh, coaching experience and my personal development also, I realize how powerful is what we name the mirroring effect, okay? So basically, uh, you see the world with specific lenses, okay? Specific yeah. filters, beliefs, based on your experience of life. And you start to believe that's the only way to see the world, right? So as you restrict yourself to this specific um, 
you know, um, yeah, window, let's say, of, of seeing the world, uh, you are developing fear about seeing something else. Okay, so you interact with someone and you may have judgment about, you know, how mm -hmm. they are, you know, their behavior, the way they talk, etc. This is reflecting the internal fear, right? So this mirroring effect. So asking ourselves in coaching, uh, oh, when I have, you know, uh, a judgment or when I, uh, I don't feel fully comfortable with someone or a situation, what does that reflect about myself? This yes. internal questioning. So mm -hmm. this came to my mind while, while you were, uh, you know, sharing that because, yes, there are changes all the time in this world. So how do we embrace those changes? Okay. Um, what, what do we learn about that? What, what, how do we want to use that? Okay. Mm -hmm. Being intentional, yeah. Mm. Yeah, very intentional. And that's where the intention of alignment comes into play. Alignment at a high level really allows us to begin to then explore and investigate. And we use this, of course, in the business context um, to what is it that we want to achieve and what is it, what are our goals and then why? Of course, the and here comes the emotional driver. Mm. And so people have those conversations so that I understand what's important to you and you understand what's important to me. And mm -hmm. let's talk about what's important to our customer in business, you know, who it is or in a coaching relationship, what is important to the client, right? So we, mm -hmm. we have those kinds of conversations. And then we move to the really where it gets really fascinating, at least for me, it's the what and the why in of itself is, is deeply engaging and fascinating. Mm -hmm. and, and the next piece is the curiosity of how. So how do we go about doing this? How do we have the necessary conversations? How do we have the dialogues that are that are going to uh, provide us with an opportunity to understand a problem, uh, understand our relationship in in a, and what what the effect of that is on the problem? So how do we go about solving the problem? In business, we look at that through the lens of culture, which is the how, the richness of the how that we function with one another, how we how we how we have. Uh, the ability to understand and have a common framework and language of our relationship to one another in the context of a team or an organization. That's culture. I mean, culture, when you peel everything away from it, and the definition that we like to use is that uh, the definition of culture is our understanding of how we individually and collectively create success. So let's have that conversation. And then, of course, there's the leadership influence. So what alignment does, it gives us a shared framework and terminology and a shared understanding of what's important, what we're trying to achieve, why, what's the emotional gear that's, that's, pretty, that's being put into play. And then let's have a conversation about the richness of how, how we communicate, how we, how we go about problem solving, how we go about making decisions and how we manage conflicts, differences. Mm -hmm. um, and then all the strategic, all the different strategic elements that need to come into alignment around that. And yeah. that's the framework. That's the process. Yes. And you can see that that's really just an extension or expression of our, of mm -hmm. how we live with one another. Yeah, I really enjoy the clarity you bring uh, uh, <laughs> to us, I believe. And, and for those who are listening, please uh, uh, tell us if you agree or not. In terms of this alignment around emotions, right? So I really enjoy when the team is, is um, you know, through, through questioning and, and sometimes struggling, uh, achieving alignment around the vision. And then the emotion that comes in the room, you know, like, yes, yeah, you know? So you, you are waiting for this moment when people, after struggling, ah, uh, no, that's not exactly that word or not really the way to say it, okay? And then suddenly, it's there. Yeah. It's like, wow, it's like, you know, <laughs> it's like uh, an, en an engine, you know, <laughs> like, like it's yeah. uh, such uh, a powerful force when people are, are uh, motivated by the vision, right? This emotional yeah. component, huh? It's a... Uh, very much so. And I think there is, you just hit on something that I think is very important is that not only is it um, that we, you know, what happens when we find alignment, mm -hmm. it's, it's the path to getting there. 
that becomes yeah. important. And again, that says that we're if we're in conflict or we have differing viewpoints, mm -hmm. uh, differing ways to interpret or see something, that then we're able to have that conversation, that we can have that that necessary dialogue. So we find then, in its simplicity, that every misalignment will 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 show up in some form of tension, some form of conflict. Okay. Yeah, and. Once you recognize that, then you realize that every misalignment is an opportunity to create alignment, to find yes. those aha yes. moments yes. when we come yes. into alignment. Yes. So it's don't shy away from the misalignments. As a matter of fact, what I suggest to leaders is that they're constantly on the lookout and look for the misalignments because yes. every misalignment yes. presents the opportunity. I, I think that's probably a great deal of what you find yourself doing in coaching. I know I do. Yeah. is when we have that deep, rich conversation with someone and mm -hmm. their definitions of success, whatever they are, is to have the conversations about where the misalignments, where where are you spending time or where are you, are you taking relationships in a, in a way that may be out of alignment with who you really are and what your goals are and your definition of success is. So every misalignment is an opportunity. It's an opportunity to solve a problem, to move forward, to build a stronger, better, more trusting relationship. So powerful, uh, what you just said, because it feels to me that you provided us with another perspective on alignment, right? Which is a misalignment. And, and really, I like the fact that you say, maybe it's another way to look at it, or it's a pass to another stage. Yes. So, yeah, and, and maybe I share what is in my mind now. A question came and said, hmm, okay, so uh, misalignment, mirroring effect, okay, maybe they are, uh, you know, very similar. Because when I was sharing about the mirroring effect, you believe that you are annoyed by something, okay? So you see somebody uh, doing something and you don't like it. Actually, it's, it's reflecting, you know, you, a part of you you don't like, okay? Or yes. you don't accept yet. So it's yes. reflecting alignment, actually. And you interpret it as a misalignment. Hmm? Okay. Now. Yeah. It's a, yeah. I think it's, uh, I'm reminded of uh, you know, someone that's looking at, looking at themselves in the mirror and really looking themselves in the eye in the mirror. And, and, uh, yeah. and then the discovery of, and what, what in a way, Simply, it's what do I like and what don't I like about myself in the moment, right? Mm -hmm. And what I don't like mm -hmm. are, are, are evidence, again, that mirroring effect of the misalignment. Mm -hmm. And I think at the at the end, and this is a, where my work is right now in terms of my writing and thought, is that, um, and I call it the third element, uh, the, two, the two most precious things in life are love and time. Mm-hmm. Of in time, mm -hmm. and then the third element I believe is is alignment. Uh, so it, it begins to question and then provide us with insight mm -hmm. into finding the answers to the question of how do I love to the fullest in the time that I have, which yeah. is ultimately did the right. And, and so I think looking in that mirroring effect and the misalignment is around self acceptance. Mm -hmm. because acceptance is a form of self-love and I I do believe that uh, and and this probably comes from just the interpretation of of the depth of religious philosophy and spiritual philosophy is what we what we um what we seek throughout our lives is acceptance of self or self-love yeah and so the idea being in the mirror is that am I able to both accept and find true acceptance of self and how do I go about doing that, including mm -hmm. what alignments do I need to create to 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 achieve that? And that and that to me is the most powerful form of alignment that exists because I do believe that that's our quest in life is that as if we're able to be cognitive, if we're able to think and learn. And the reason that people um, in their journey want to be surrounded with those they love most in their last moments of life is because that's where the deepest form of love and acceptance and, and fulfillment comes from. Mm. So that, that mirror effect, I think, is a really important one. And if you peel everything away, what are we really talking about, right? Yeah. 
talking about acceptance of self and the discovery of mm -hmm. how to get there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very powerful. Nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm really feeling we go deep here, and I, I really also like the, 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 the link you make with the time, okay? Because time has been a question for human beings, actually, yes. for a very long time, okay? <laughs> and, I think, and I think at the core, that's where it comes from, because yes. as we go yeah. through life, we yeah. come to, uh, early on, we have limited love relationships. We don't oh. quite reason. We don't quite understand them. And then as we move through life, we increase the number of love relationships. We increase the depth of the, of the love enough. We expand. Mm -hmm. So as we move through life, we understand that we expand our love relationships. We expand. And we and sooner or later, we discover that the human capacity for love is infinite. Yeah. And it's boundaryless. Mm -hmm. And as love expands, and I, this is, I think, the greatest tension we live with as human beings, because as love expands, time contracts. Ah, and I yes, believe yes. that's where the idea of the preciousness of time emanates from. And we can apply it. Well, time is precious. Let's not waste it in a bad meeting. It would work. Time is precious because I don't want to be doing things uh, that are out of alignment and ought not to be doing. And really, if you peel everything away, I think that's the origin of that way of thinking is mm -hmm. that we realize that the, the two elements that create the tension are love and time and so those two elements, and the third element, I, I think, is that self-awareness, that self-discovery, that ability to, to, to come into alignment with, with how it is that we manage that relationship of love and time. Yeah, so fascinating. Uh, um, you know, and, and that's why we say when we are connected with another human being, we don't think about the time. We are in flow. Yeah? Yes. Yes, just like if I'm, I myself, I'm in flow in, in my art, my business, mm -hmm. my creativity, whatever it happens to be. Mm -hmm. What I'm actually doing is, in a way, if you, if you look at the depth of that, I'm yeah. in a state of self-acceptance. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm working, yes. I, I have freedom, I don't have fear. My, my, the definition I like to use of freedom is the mm -hmm. moments we exist without fear. Yeah. And that allows us mm -hmm. to, to be in the flow. Now I'm acting fearlessly. I, I'm in like, alignment. I don't have the fear of misalignment. No yeah. Very easy. And, you know, it's, it's fascinating to look at a team. Um, you know, they are talking about a specific problem, something that they want to achieve. And when they are really connected to each other, uh, yeah. you see how easy it is. They, they come with, with ideas and then they, they decide, they find their way. In, in uh, what I would say from external, the minimal time, right? And sometimes, you know, even something you, you wouldn't believe initially would be possible. So, um, yeah, they, 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 they put the time uh, aside. They, they are really connected with, in the pleasure to be together and to create together. Mm -hmm. and that, I hope, yeah, and that happens often when I'm working with a, with a team. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a facilitator, you're always mm -hmm. conscious of the clock. Mm -hmm time right because you want to make the best use of the time and so you come to a certain point time wise and a group and you can see and get a sense that the team's in in a flow they're they're just really they're innovating they're 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 solving a problem at a high level they're they're in the height of design mm -hmm. and, and you can remind them of the time and all of a sudden they look at each other and it, you can see that it, it, you know the messaging here is well we're okay are you so, Edgar, are you okay time-wise? Yeah, I'm okay. Well, yeah, we don't want to stop. Let's keep going. Yeah. Um, because we find that. And I, and I think that's the, the, that essence of wanting to have relationships that don't have boundaries because the ultimate boundary is time. Yeah. Wonderful. Wow. So powerful. Nice, nice. Okay. So, um, so we are... We are uh, you know, obviously in flow here. And I'm curious about, because as we said, it, it doesn't always happen. So do you have a specific uh, recommendation uh, for the people listening to us on mm -hmm. how to move from a state where people are not in flow, not well connected, not aligned, to a place they are aligned? What's, what is the magic uh, wand there? <laughs> Uh, I think it. I think it. If if to 
in, to engage in a conversation about that, I think is, is the first step and to bring it into the dialogue. Um, and I find that the most useful piece of that is to state, make a statement of intention. Mm -hmm. so my intention is to just explore w where we're at or explore where as a team, where you're, where, where, how you're currently operating and functioning or what's going on right now. And what do you get a sense of that? What is working? And let's talk about what's not. Mm -hmm. And what's working, what's not is, is a, uh, I think, a safe way of coming at. So what's working for you? What are your fears about what's getting in the way of it working? Mm -hmm. So, and I think flow is, if you look at flow as being a place of being in alignment, which I think it is at the end of the day, it's, it's maybe a real pure form of alignment. It has purity. Um, let's talk about what's getting in the way of that, which then leads you to the conversation again, of the relationships or perhaps a lack of clarity on what we're trying to achieve, why it's important to some and perhaps not to others. And so we get to have those conversations where the misalignments are that are getting in the way of the flow of the team. Mm -hmm. So I think the first place to always go to, if I may, is, is to make statements of intention. Now, intention doesn't always mean that that's the outcome you're going to get. But when we, when we intentionalize, what we're doing is we're we're um, we're bringing into the spoken realm what we'd like as a definition of trust, mm. whatever that dimension of trust is. Here it is, and so my intention is to be helpful to to the team right now. So I just want to take a pause here and ask you to just simply reflect for a few minutes here on what's working, and let's also talk about what's not working here, so we can find a better path to function, and mm. or perhaps work together differently and better. And what does that look like? So let's have that conversation. And what I find is sometimes, especially with teams, they don't know how to have that conversation. So the prompting of giving some, some language to work with, I think is very important. And I find that alignment is a language and a framework that is easily accessible, uh, that uh, regardless of where I am in the world, people can wrap their, because they'll get a sense of, yeah, alignment means that we, we're either thinking differently or thinking um, alike, or we're wanting to work alike or differently. And so we, we, it's, it's an easy way to manifest the, and a very safe way in most cases to manifest at least the, the opening of the door to the conversation. Mm. The, the talk of that is out, the come mm. on in, because we don't want to push, we want to pull. And mm. asking the questions and inquiry through curiosity mm. and the contextual inquiry allows us to pull people into alignment. Mm. So we don't want to push the elephant. <laughs> we want to push oh. this elephant. <laughs> yeah. I was always amazed with, with this word of elephant in the room, like a big weight, you know, in the room, something that's there. And... Mm but we don't want to see. Huh? So, yeah. Well, in, in the book, uh, The Elephant in the Boardroom, I actually yeah. tell the story of the origin of that. Mm. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm. Can yeah. you tell us on the moment here? Yeah. yeah, yeah. It actually stems from a long time ago. Uh, there was a play, a, a, mm -hmm. a play about a circus owner mm -hmm. um, whose who's, who's, um, prize relationship that is what he loves most is, is the star of his circus, an, an elephant, mm -hmm. Jumbo. And um, so uh, unfortunately he has a gambling problem and um, he eventually loses the circus in a bet, in a card game. Mm -hmm. and, and the new owner of the circus happens to be a competitor who buys the debt and then takes over his circus, mm -hmm. his main competitor in the circus industry. So, the, uh, so he's forced off the circus grounds but he cannot live without Jumbo. His mm -hmm. the love of his life is elephant. So he sneaks back into the circus grounds and and is walking and is trying to sneak Jumbo out. Mm -hmm. When 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 the uh, sheriff or the law the the, uh, the policeman sees him leaving with the elephant, and and his nickname is Pops, the character, the old man, mm -hmm. the owner, and he says, "So Pops, where are you going with that elephant?" And Pops looks over his shoulder and goes, what elephant? Mm. Well, obviously there's an elephant and the elephant is big. It's there and it's, you can't avoid it. And that's where uh, the origin of that expression that's become so, so popular is from is there's an elephant in the room and nobody wants to talk about it. 
What mm-hmm. elephant? I don't see an elephant. Yeah. And, and I like to say for leaders, show me a leader that that doesn't see or doesn't confront the elephant, that, that doesn't point to the elephant, and I'll show you the biggest elephant in the room. Mm-hmm. Eventually, so much of leadership is, is about being able to discover the elephant, to be able to acknowledge the elephant, to use that elephant or that misalignment in a team or in an environment to actually in a more productive and, and useful way. Yeah. Yeah. So, so mm. in, in, when I, when I, uh, mm. when I bet, went back to research it, uh, there's some other, um, uh, some other uh, philosophical origins to the elephant, but, it, it, and it appears that that's the clearest one is that, uh, go, and that goes back about a hundred years mm. story. Nice. So it's, yeah. A lot of speed in 100 years. Okay, nice. Nice link to the mirroring effect, I believe, because it's like this elephant is mirroring what's happening for us. And so if we look at it, if we confront it, then we can see what's happening for us. Yeah. Okay. Wow, super. Yeah. So I'm yeah. conscious about the time uh, now, also for the audience. So um, I like to ask, uh, you know, uh, the question of... Um, Priorities, okay. Well, what's really important for you this year? Would you like to share that with us? Yeah, it's a completion of the book about love and time. Uh, mm. um, another one is uh, that I recognize I, I just turned 65. And so um, I'm recognizing that uh, it's important for me to be aligned in what I want to accomplish the next 20 or 30 years, the next, uh, the next, uh, Mm-hmm. big piece of life and uh, what is what does that look like and i find myself moving more and more into the world and i think a, a lot of people my age doing the work that i do move to is that i just want to be doing more teaching and uh more coaching and mentoring of other coaches and and uh and teachers uh mm-hmm. and to continue to explore the the depth of what alignment has to offer to be to be teaching and uh uh, to be doing that work, so oh, wow. it's in a way continuance. It's a continuance with greater depth. I've worked a lot at um, using what I've uh, the true alignment framework and using what I've developed through the years, and using that uh, and um, and applying it. And, I, and now it's I think it's time for me to turn my attention to teaching what I've learned from applying the work. Oh, and, uh, yeah. So in, in a way, I think it's a fulfillment of my desire and legacy to be in service, to bring some, that's my my path to bringing some good to the world. Oh, wow. I feel so excited that you are, uh, you know, thinking to explore further this alignment in education. I mm-hmm. really believe that there is a lot to do there from my own experience and my experience as a teacher also and um, observing other teachers. So, um, this aspect of aligning when you, you are in, in, you know, I mean, uh, whatever it is, adults or, or, uh, or kids, you know, it's like, uh, yeah. how do you create this alignment in the room? It's, it's not uh, something so easy, you know, uh, how you keep um, attention, uh, how you motivate, how you, at the same time, adapt to each person and also, um, move forward with the message. Um, so, yeah, it's really fascinating. So that's, I'm, I'm feeling really great that you are exploring further this field. Yeah. Thank you. That's yeah. kind of you. Thank you. Yeah, wonderful. So before we, we, we end this discussion, I believe we could talk for, for hours or days even. And, and it's not the end. Huh? Maybe we are preparing something else for those who are listening to us. So what is your um, key message? Okay, Thinking about this question about how to align for innovation, what would you like uh, to, to send to the audience as a key message? Yeah. Um, I think that at the end, what you know, how do we align for innovation? And the answer lies in itself, which is what are we... What do what are we innovating for, and how do we how do we answer that question? In other words, um, how do we gain a clarity of the problem we're trying to solve and what we're trying to bring to the world, 
and to begin with the simple idea of let's get aligned on on that just it, just the basic construct of what we're trying to achieve and why and then to 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 talk about the alignment of how we get there how we work together and the, the richness of the relationships that we can that we can create hmm. okay thank you so much it was such a pleasure to talk with you and and feeling this alignment huh? You naturally create, yeah. It's a great predictor of success. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. So um, I would like uh, to also announce uh, for those uh, who are listening uh, what's going to happen next week. Uh, so you can join uh, the my morning uh, lives at 8.30 CET on Tuesdays where I share tips and experience from my uh, coach life, my uh, own life and uh, So bring your questions, send me your question uh, so that I can, you know, best serve you. Uh, and I will have the pleasure to um, interview uh, Jeff Smith, um, also part of ACEC. Uh, and the topic uh, we chose is how to influence change without control. Okay, so another interesting question. <laughs> and it's a very good question. <laughs> <laughs> And so, yeah, because, you know, uh, control, is, is uh, as we discussed, is also part of our life. Or we try to control things we can't really control. Um, okay, wonderful. So that will be Thursday, next Thursday at 6 uh, p.m. CET. Okay, thank you so much again, Edgar, for this. Thank uh, you very much for uh, joining you. Thank you. Yeah, and uh, we will talk again soon. So... Have a good for all of, of you. Have a good end of the week, a good weekend, and we talk next week. Bye bye.